Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is an MSI case which really catches the eye, but more importantly, it has some hidden features that are worth exploring. As you can see, it has multiple different panels to it, which allow you to see straight into it. So it has that fishbowl effect, which is great if you're packing in some RGB lighting, like I am here with MSI's own RGB fans. But more importantly, it has some really interesting highlights to it that aren't immediately obvious. So I'm going to dive into those and show you some of the things that are really cool about this. As you can see, for example, we've got multiple air panels on the rear and some RGB bleed through there as well. It also comes with its own fans pre-installed, three of which are the side mounted fans, which are reverse blade fans. And that's an interesting highlight that you rarely see on a case. Not only are you getting RGB fans as standard, you're getting four of them and three of them are reverse blade, which means that the fan blades face in a different direction to standard. So they're sucking cold air in through the side there and then you're exhausting air out the rear. This is also one of the few cases which supports MSI's Project Zero motherboards. This is the B650M, an AMD board, which is interesting in its own right, because it's not only stunning, but it also has two PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD ports, as well as support for DDR5 RAM. But more importantly, it has rear connections, which means all the usual connections, power connectors, and everything else is at the rear of the motherboard. Now, you will have noticed that the case has a lot going on here, but there are cutouts around the usual motherboard tray that you wouldn't normally see. So there's more holes here, and that's because when you slot the motherboard in place, those back connectors then go towards the rear of the case, which then means that you have a much cleaner build. When you install the motherboard and connect everything up, you end up with a really clean looking build at the front. So basically everything's hidden from view. As long as you're careful with your cable management, you can make the front of your PC look really nice. Now, obviously the GPU is not in place here, but it still looks pretty awesome as you'll see. Now, this obviously has some downsides to it. You'll see, for example, that you do need to do a lot of cable management at the back. And I will say this is one downside to the case. I think there's not quite enough space back here for it. There are some loops that you can use and some Velcro ties, but I did find that I was using a lot of plastic cable ties in order to tie the cables together for the fans to neaten things up a bit and to keep them out of the way. Because it is important to make sure that none of the cables are gonna get in the way of the connectors. You don't want any shorts or any damage done to the motherboard. You also just need to be able to access them. Indeed, I found that despite even doing all this cable management, when it came to plugging in the USB-C cable from the front panel, and the USB-A, the Velcro tie was in the way, which shows a bit of a problem there. A minor one, but some things that you do need to think about that you wouldn't normally have to bother with if you were connecting them on the front using a standard motherboard. So the other downside here is the space is a little bit hit and miss. I've cable managed, but not very effectively because I'm going to be taking this case apart because it's only a loan sample that has to be returned but the door still goes on so that's something the other thing that's really cool though is at the rear you'll see aside from the mess of cables this fan controller now this fan controller controls both rgb lighting and fan power for the included fans so up to four fans have their rgb and speed controlled by this controller that then needs to be connected to the sata power from your power supply unit and the five volt header on your motherboard as well as a system fan header on your motherboard as well you can then control the fan speed and RGB lighting used in your motherboard software, but you can also additionally control the RGB from a case button, which I'll show you in a minute. You can plug in the five volt header, which is a three pin connection on your motherboard and a system fan header and have the usual standard controls over all the fans, but all the wiring is at the back, which makes life really easy. If you combine it with MSI's own Mag Core Liquid E360 all-in-one cooler, then you can take advantage of something else. Now, this comes with very similar fans to the case itself. It's slightly aesthetically different, but the wiring logic is very similar. It has fan power and RGB connectors. You'll notice each of the fans has two connectors on it, and those are the 5 volt header connections, the standard ones, but they can be daisy-chained together. So you can connect one fan to the next fan to the next fan. And it's very straightforward to do because you can see that there's male and female connectors and there's just three pins on them. So you just take the little plastic cover off and connect them up together and then hook those into the system. 
The pump head also connects up to this, so you can create a full chain there. And then once you put this into the case and install it, you can then also connect that RGB connection up to the rest of the fans, which is how you saw the RGB lighting happening at the beginning. Now, there is obviously some more cable management to do, but once you do that, you can then connect it up by running the cables through to the rear and then simply connecting them up with the five volt connector to the other one. So take one of those daisy chain connections and hook it up to the other fans in the case and to the controller. And then the whole system is then all synced together, which means the RGB lighting is even simpler. Now this simplifies the process really nicely and makes life a lot easier than in other systems where you might need a separate controller and complicated things, multiple control boxes and fan controllers in there. Yes, we've got one fan controller with the case as standard, but it means if you're throwing in more MSI things, then it should be fairly easy to do. Also with this LED connector that's plugged into the front of the case, there's a button down here, which is marked LED, which you can press, and then it just changes through the various different lighting effects on the fans. This gives you hardware control over the fan lighting, which you can easily just cycle through. However, obviously you can also control it via your motherboard software if you choose to do so. But the fact that this works on all of the fans that I've got in the case in a pretty simple setup is very nice indeed and very straightforward to do. It's not a perfect case though. As you've seen, it's pretty big and yet it only supports MATX and RTX motherboards, not the standard ATX size that you usually find. The other thing is you really need to use NVMe SSDs in your build because storage options are fairly limited. So with this Project Zero motherboard, there's two ports in it for NVMe SSDs and I'm using one for the OS and game drive that we're using here, which is easy to install and obviously makes life pretty hassle-free anyway. These are fast and really simple to plug in and really simple to get using and I would recommend them over traditional hard disk drives and SSDs but the problem is if you do want to use hard disk drives and SSDs then you're going to be limited in your options. Now I found a big problem with this because um, MSI hadn't supplied the right things for it because it was a loan sample but as you'll see from the shots there's very little space at the back so there's no traditional hard disk drive cage and indeed if you want to install SSDs you can only install two 2.5 inch or one 3.5 inch hard disk drive and one 2.5 inch SSD mounted behind the motherboard. Similarly, you need to think about your power supply unit. So this is an MSI A850GL PCIe Gen 5 Ready ATX3 power supply unit. It's fairly compact, which isn't the problem, but what it does have is some very nice cables which are pretty thin. And this is really useful because as you've seen already, the cable space at the back isn't that massive. The channeling is mediocre at best, and then you basically have very little space for on the cables. And I've already talked about the importance of making sure the cables are cable tied and out of the way of the motherboard. But also, if you have a power supply that isn't this one, you're using a different one, and it has thick, hefty power supply cables that are going to be problematic and get in the way, the sort of traditional ones that are sleeved and really fat, you might have problems running through the case, you might have problems finding places to tie them down, or they might just block that rear door. So I think you're going to be limited there. Now this isn't the only power supply with these sorts of thin cables, and I've seen Corsair ones and similar ones, but I think it's worth pointing out, you've seen already, that you can close the door with these cables, but when you put the power supply in, and then you've got all these cables there, you can see there's not much space to negotiate things around. However, despite those couple of potential issues, I did find it fairly easy to build in this and to close it up at the end. And it does end up looking pretty magnificent. I think this is a really nice build. MSI's 4070 Super looks really nice in here. There's plenty of space for bigger cards as well, as you can see. And the back connect design is also fantastic. Now, if you're wondering about thermal performance, I also did some benchmarking. I used Cinebench and 3D Mark to run a number of stress tests to see how the CPU got on and the general performance of the GPU and the temperatures inside it. This is an AMD Ryzen 7 7700X and it has eight cores, but Cinebench puts it under pretty heavy load. But as you can see, we basically only got into the low 90 degrees in terms of the scores for the temperatures, which is actually pretty impressive for this. More importantly, I also found that it wasn't getting particularly loud while I'm doing so. So the CPU wasn't getting that hot. And also the fans weren't ramping up to extreme noise levels and then causing the case to be really loud. 
And this is obviously going to vary depending on what you're putting into the system. But my experience with it is that the fans are pretty quiet. So you can see that the system fan headers, for example, only maxed out a thousand RPM and the CPU and the pump fans also similarly went along at those speeds. The CPU fans were a bit faster. Those are the ones that are installed on the radiator at 2000 RPM, but even still the temps didn't get too high. It didn't get too loud either. With stress testing with Port Royal and benchmarking the GPU in other ways, I found that the GPU temperature also wasn't getting too hot. You can see we're maxed out at 77 degrees on the hotspot, 67 on the GPU, just not too terrible. So the overall consensus there is there's decent airflow in the case, even with just the standard pre-installed fans and then a 360mm radiator on there. So that makes the process for installing everything and setting it up in a nice way really easy if you don't want to go crazy with all the extra fans you're going to be adding in and making it more and more complicated and you end up with a really nice MSI build which is all MSI all the time but runs really well and looks really good but the storage is potentially an option that's worth bearing in mind. This has been the Provoke Pro and I hope you found it useful. Subscribe for more. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.